Hey Wargamers, today I have another Tau Army List review for you, but it's a little different than our typical fare. Uh, indeed, this list is looking primarily at auxiliary units, so Crude and Vespid, and trying to make them the stars of the show. We do include some mainline Tau units, uh, but they are really there as more of a necessity in order to make the list function, more so than being the main idea or driving principle of the list. So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, so the list, the original list, is a 2,000 point or 1997 point list, including two detachments, um, and uses the emergency dispensation stratagem in order to get uh, a little bit more uh, prototype weapons, relics, in the list. We have uh, one of those detachments as a uh, Kelshan detachment uh, using the custom sept rules of hybridized weaponry, uh, giving us a little bit extra range on our assault weapons, and then soldiers in arms giving our for the greater good uh, an additional range up to nine inches. So, uh, you know, going for a little bit of a of a pew pew list here, um, and then. Then our second uh, detachment is Dalith. Um, as you might expect, given that first detachment, our warlord is Shasso Rely, uh, and he has an inspiring leader warlord trait, uh, basically improving the leadership of units around him. Now, as I said, this is a list focusing on crude investment, and so the author of the list has uh, put a fair amount of work into uh, making the crew really stand out on the tabletop. And so there's some nice conversions here uh, that he wanted me to you know, share with you, uh, or at least he, he he sent me pictures of, so I want to share with you. Um, so that's what you see here on the, on the side. All right, let's jump into it with this first attachment here. We have a battalion, which is Kalshan, uh, again, with the soldiers in arms and hybridized weaponry custom sept choices. Uh, it's Started off with a Kadra Fireblade here. He has a Pure Tide Engram Neuro Chip. Uh, you know, this is a, a pretty typical choice, especially, um, in 8th edition, uh, it's no longer quite as quintessential as it used to be. Uh, there is uh, utility here. He is, of course, uh, a super reliable shot with a marker light. Uh, having the Pure Ted Engram Neuro Chip on him is nice, too, because as a infantry, he's going to be easily hidden. And so, um, you know, having the Pure Ted Engram Neuro Chip on him as opposed to someone else uh, makes a lot of sense. And he's going to be kind of back, uh, not necessarily in harm's way. So, uh, a lot of sense for using him as the caddy for that. Um, but I think the real strength here of the Fireblade, of course, is the inclusion of strike teams. And so if we were going to be deviating from strike teams, uh, maybe we might consider um, a different choice here. The second uh, HQ unit on this battalion is Chasseau Rely, as you might anticipate, given the Kelshan uh, Sep choice. He is um, using the Inspiring Leader Warlord trait, and that choice is something that's going to play pretty well because we don't have an ethereal in this list. Um, an ethereal would be an alternative choice to that fire blade and one that would uh, achieve a, a bit stronger effect than the inspiring leader warlord choice here because the warlord trait is really intended to boost the, the leadership of all units. It's all friendly units. So that applies not just to sept units, uh, but across the army. And so we can boost the leadership of crude and Vespid uh, easily using that, assuming they are next to Chasso Rely. Um, so the Ethereal could give us a better boost there in leadership, um, certainly. Uh, but as it is, uh, having that Warlord trait, it does make a, a fair amount of sense. If I were to move away from that, maybe I would consider, you know, kind of some of the, the more staple uh, choices like through Unity Devastation. Shesso Rely himself is a interesting choice, one that certainly adds a lot of flavor and, um, and, you know, variability to a list, right? He's not a standard choice. He's not your, your auto take, uh, by any means, but he does do some fun things in terms of the, uh, output on his weaponry and being relatively durable. So he can offer some, you know, pointed support. He can do some, uh, selective removal for you, uh, which is really nice. Uh, I think he's, he's a fun choice and one that, that can get work done in the right situation. And then we have three 10 man units of strike teams with carbines. Now, carbines are the atypical choice here, but they work well with the hybridized weaponry septenant because they get an additional four inches with, of range. Uh, so that boosts them from 18 inches to 22 inches. And 
in conjunction with the Cotter Fireblade, that means that they are actually getting three shots at 11 inches, which is a little bit shorter than the three inch, the three shots that you get at 15 inches with the uh, rifle. But I think it does give us a little bit of a leg up in the fact that we're getting two shots at 22 inches as opposed to only 15. So this particular step 10 actually increases the range in which the carbine is the superior choice um, from just 15 to 18 to 15 to 22. So I think that works here, uh, but we do have quite a lot of strength five shooting as you'll see in this list um, or you know, strength four shooting too. Um, so maybe this isn't necessarily the, um, the, the, the most novel addition to the list. And in that way, um, they might be slightly redundant with a lot of the other weapons that we already have access to. So, uh, we'll put a pin on that and come back to it. But, um, we have two, we have a guardian drone and a marker drone with each of them. Uh, strike teams don't benefit the same from guardian drones as breacher teams do, but still a, you know, totally fine choice. Uh, marker drones here are also good that they give some sort of marker light support. Uh, depending on the rest of the list, I might switch this to, uh, just marker drones, uh, but uh, we will take a look at that. Moving on to the elite section, we have two three-man units of Krutox. Um, so the Krut gun is, you know, fairly comparable to the missile pod, um, and so this works out just fine. Um, of course, they don't have the sept tenant, so they don't benefit from uh, any of the sept rules, but um, it is in theme for relying on those auxiliaries. So um, we get to use some of those cool conversions. We get to have uh, Krut running around the tabletop. It's a win, um, and they can, you know, pack a punch at range and also the crew tags themselves can uh go berserk so uh, in close combat so we can we, we can make some fun things happen with the crew tags here um, they just don't last on the on the tabletop very long they're not very durable like most crew so that's the the main weakness there and then we have a riptide with two fusion blasters amplified ion accelerator counter fire defense system and drone controller uh, the fusion blasters amplified ion accelerator which is a pro prototype weapon uh, are fantastic choices for anti-tank and anti-heavy uh, units and so that will do a lot of work for you it's not going to be able to be your sole source of anti uh, heavy units but it will do a lot of work on a limited number of targets for you so it does need to be supplemented but it will do a lot of heavy lifting kind of fire defense system and drone controller are you know totally fine choices uh, the drone co controller is nice given that this riptide has two shield missile drones so they're, you know, the same price as a shield drone. Uh, so they, you, you really don't, there's really no reason to not take the shield and missile drone um, if you were thinking about taking shield drones elsewhere in the list. So, uh, you know, this is fine. Plus you get a missile drone, uh, a missile pod on top of it, uh, plus a drone controller, you know, works well. It will be a nice kind of anchor unit for your drones to hover around. And I would expect that many of the drones that are in this list would end up finding their way over near the riptide anyway to protect it. So um, having the drone controller on top of there is a good choice. And the counterfire defense system also um, a good choice just to kind of protect that riptide a bit more. He, he could use that counterfire <laughs> basically. Um, then we have three hazard suits with fusion cascades and shield generators. The thing about hazard suits, they can be, they're very points efficient if you can use them, right? If you can actually enact them, if they can get in range, stay in range and fire all throughout the game, they are a fantastic return on investment, but that is very challenging to do. Uh, I suspect that's why these have shield generators is to try to keep them in the fight a little bit longer. But um, the, those fusion cascades are very, very short range and uh, it's, it's really hard to enact them. I think these are a wonderful choice for fun. Um, and again, I think that's more of the idea of this list is is that this is a first and foremost meant to be a list for fun uh, not for winning gts um, so like keeping that in mind i think these are a wonderful inclusion in the list because they are uh um fun as as uh well they're as fun as, as a hazard suit could be they're hazardously fun um so yeah, that's great. They have a gun drone and a marker drone. I would probably, you know, either go all gun drone or all marker drone. Like the four, you know, strength five shots here really probably aren't going to make a difference. So we either would want to bulk those up or just go with the marker drones to kind of help out those fusion cascades a little bit more. 
Then we have three Vespid units, two with five and one with four Vespid, including a strain leader in each of those. Those strain leaders are really important. They provide some staying power, some leadership ability in that unit. Um, and so you, you should always take a strain leader. But um, um, the difference here in, in five versus four is probably just due to points. I don't think there's a real strategic reason to take only four over five. Um, so yeah, like this is totally in the vein of the the theme of the list, right? We're, we're building a list here at this point that is very cagey and Vespid are cagey, right? Like this, this list does not have a lot of staying power. Um, the Riptide is so far the most durable thing. And um, we have a limited number of drones in the list. So I, I think, you know, this list is meant to play very cagey, very, very strike and fade. Um, and Vespid can do that, right? Like that's kind of their thing. They're not going to stick around um, very long if, if uh, confronted directly. So um, having three units of them uh, is, is good in that vein because you'll, you'll need them, right? They're not gonna, they're not gonna stay on the tabletop the entire game. So having multiple units, having that little bit of redundancy there will ensure that you're able to utilize them uh, at least, you know, at least three times, I suppose, <laughs> which is good. Uh, and then we have two devilfish uh, with smart missile systems. Now, you know, a lot of people will take, uh, drones on these instead of smart missile systems. Smart missile systems themselves are very good. They don't require a line of sight. They, uh, you know, bring a lot to the table, but, um, just sticking with the drones on the devilfish is nice because one, it's a cheap way to get drones and also just kind of keeps the, the devilfish as being, um, you know, being a, a, a minimalist investment. Um, the, we have two devilfish here meant to primarily to, to carry those, um, those carbine strike teams around, make sure that they can utilize that range. Um, I don't know if two of them are totally necessary, right? Like they, the thing about the Delfish here is that they are, they are in conjunction with the Riptide providing some durability, right? We can have our, we can have our strike teams in the Delfish and then ensure that they're able to survive for a certain period of time. Um, the Delfish themselves can, can sit on objectives. Again, part of the reason why they have smart missile systems here is that they can hide on an objective behind a, you know, a obscuring terrain and still contribute something uh, aside from just objective scoring. So, um, so I, I, I think that they are, are good choices in that regard. There are other ways that we could do that, of course, though. There are other ways that we can build in durability to our list, aside from just taking devilfish to have devilfish. Um, but but I think we're kind of in the middle of the road here in terms of we have these devilfish to to caddy around some, you know, carbine strike teams, um, and the devilfish do some work on their own, too. So I, I think that's a fine choice uh, in that regard. All right, and then we get to the second detachment, finally. <laughs> um, it's a patrol detachment, and it is a separate sept. It's Dalith, as opposed to our custom Kelshan detachment. Uh, it's led by an XVA commander with three cyclic ion blasters, a shield generator, and iridium armor. Uh, the cyclic ion blasters are a pretty standard choice. They're going to bring a lot of punching ability, some flexibility uh, to the army. Uh, you know, of course, most armies will have more than just three cyclic ion blasters, but... Uh, the inclusion here is welcome. We, you know, we have, we have, um, the hazard suits, we have the riptide, we have, uh, the crew tox so far as really being things that can offer some sort of punching ability. Uh, but we've discussed the limitations of all three of those. And so having a little bit more reliable punching ability in the form of this commander is good. Uh, the shield generator is a choice, um, here that, that does make a lot of sense if he's going to get charged. Um, right? Like he, he is Dalith, which means that he's a separate sept than the majority of the drones in the army. He brings two drones. Um, so he's going to have access to those lookouts or those savior protocols, but he can't benefit from savior protocols from any other drones in the list. Um, and so he's really going to be relying on lookout, sir, to prevent himself being targeted. So he'll have to to do a lot of screening, a lot of hiding in order to um, not be targeted. And so the shield generator is a choice that um, is going to give you some safety in the case that you're not able to maintain that screening or if he does get charged. Um, same thing with the iridium there. I think the iridium is, you know, a pretty 
pretty uh, auto include thing here uh, because you're not really giving anything up for that other than the points. The shield generator, you could argue, you know, maybe you're better off taking an advanced targeting system instead of a shield generator just because it improves its output and you're, you know, you're going to have that lookout serve for at least a few turns. Um, so I, I think you could go either way on that depending on how how um, well you're able to leverage the high model count in this army to keep that commander alive. Promising Pupil is a stratagem that allows him to take a Warlord trait. Um, he's taking Gunship Diplomat, which allows nearby Crude and Vespid to fire for the greater good. There seems to be the hope, the aspiration of interaction here between um, this and the um, Soldiers in Arms uh, Septenant in the Kalshan selection. Unfortunately, they won't interact because although Gunship Diplomat gives Crude and Vespid for the greater good if they are close by, uh, it does not give them the Sept Tenant. It does not give them the Sept uh, keyword. So, um, so they're not able to to benefit from any Sept Tenants, but they can fire for the greater good, which is good. <laughs> it's it, it's good, the greater good. Um, yeah. So. Gunship Diplomat here is is nice and and will offer some some utility to the high number of auxiliaries uh, that are in the list. So I think that's that's you know uh, that's the clear utility there. Um, I don't know if there was an intention of a rules interaction there or not, but um, just clarifying that there is not um, one possible. So uh, I think that's a, a great a great little commander to have in this de this patrol detachment. Uh, he has two ten man units of crude. I want to see more crude in this list, right? I think if we're gonna go for crude, we should make more crude. Uh, so let's get more let's get more crude in here. And then you have a shaper. Uh, you need a shaper if you're gonna be bringing a bunch of crude. So cool. Uh, let's do it. And uh, yeah, that's that's the list. Uh, as I said earlier, I think. This list plays very cagey. Um, it has some some uh, punching ability, but it's limited, right? We have we have the hazard suits. They're really hard to actually utilize throughout the majority of the game. The Riptide is the most reliable source here, and then we have the Crudox, which um, are going to be able to to do some punching, but they again are are maybe not long for this world. Uh, so I would like to see a little bit more offensive shooting ability or higher strength shooting ability um, and some durability offered in this list. I don't know. Um, I, you know, there's a limit to how much we can do that if we're sticking to the theme, but we're going to give it a, the, the old college try um, to, to, to tweak this to be a little bit punchier, a little bit more durable. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, ironically or counterintuitively, I want to see more crew too, right? Like I, I think we should have more bodies in this list even. So let's see what we can do. Uh, let's, let's play with this list again. If you haven't seen one of these before, I probably should have said this before. If you haven't seen one of these before, I'm going to try to review this list while maintaining the general theme of the list, the general approach. Um, and so that's what the revision will be. It'll be largely a list that maintains a lot of the same elements, but tweaks them to just be a little bit more successful in the in the game of 40k I play in my mind. So let's get to it. All right, and here's the revised list. So uh, we are at 1996 points, still two detachments, the same configuration, still emergency dispensation for our stratagems. Uh, same SEPs, same uh, Warlord, same Warlord trait. Now, I know I said that uh, maybe we could stray from the Inspiring Leader as the Warlord trait, and we certainly could, but um, I... I like the idea, given the low leadership of a lot of the units in this army, of just giving them an extra layer of protection uh, with that inspiring leader trait. So uh, this just gives them a little bit more buffer against the morale phase. Um, and, you know, we, we could very easily go th for through unity devastation. I don't think that would be the wrong choice at all. Um, but this seems like it, it could just give us a little bit more buffer given a lot of things are going to die. So <laughs> let's just, let's, let's, let's play with it and see how it goes. Okay. Our Kel Shan detachment here. I switched out the Cadre Fireblade for an ethereal, uh, and that'll make more sense in a minute here. Um, he's on a hover drone. He has two marker drones with him. Uh, the ethereal here is largely because I want to be able to give, um, I want to give everybody 
uh, the guidance of the ethereal's leadership, um, right? Like I think that that will go a long way, uh, you know, kind of along the same lines. Well, really uh, along the exact same lines that I just mentioned with um, using inspiring leader as, as opposed to going for a different warlord trait. So um, the ethereal is really going to, you know, lay down the law and uh, provide some much needed uh, morale support for the army, uh, and the hover drone allows him to be in the right place at the right time to do that. So I, I think this is probably a, a stronger choice in that regard. Uh, Chasso relies exactly the same. He's still doing the same things in this list. Uh, then we get into our troops. We have four five-man breacher teams. So this is fewer um, strike teams or fewer fire warriors, um, but they are breacher teams. They are going to be more. Um, more punchy right and they're going to benefit more from these guardian drones notice i've only included drones on um on two of those units that is because i'm intentionally packaging these to have one unit with drones and one unit without inside a double fish um, and that way i can pack all my fire warriors into those double fish ensure that they're staying on the board for at least you know a turn um and then you know giving them some durability and mobility to use those those blasters um so i think i think this is going to give us a little bit more durability and a little bit more offensive ability even though it's fewer fire warriors overall um, it, it brings something different to the list that was otherwise lacking in my opinion Moving on, we still have those Crutox, uh, you know, Crutox Pride. Let's let's get more Crutox out there. Uh, it's one of those models that um, will always, you know, just be like <laughs> iconic to me. Uh, I know that this particular author is using conversions, but um, but I still love Crutox or Crutoxin, <laughs> if you will. Um, then we have the Riptide. He's still the same. Um, then we have the three hazard suits. Again, I, you know, if I were to be be shifting away, maybe a little bit more competitively minded, I would I would not include all three hazard suits here. Maybe one, maybe two, um, but I I probably would use those points to do something else. Um, but but that's not what we're doing. Like this, that's, this is kind of the name of the game. So we're going to stick with it. Um, and, and I've, the only change I've made here is just giving them two marker drones to make sure that they're, they're able to land their, um, fusion cascade shots effectively. That's a, that's the only thing is just giving them a little bit more support there, um, in terms of their, their shooting ability. Then we have three units of Vespid still, still with strain layers, but now they're all just four unit, four man units. You know, five was nice. I don't think the, the difference between four and five is that important. Freed up some points elsewhere. Um, we can still do a lot of the same things with four man units. So that's what we did. Uh, then we have the two Delphish. This time they're bringing gun drones instead of four missile systems, just because the gun drones are again, another source of drones and saber protocols. Um, and then we have the uh, seeker missile on one of them just to to use up a little bit of points there. Um, you know, we probably could have made it work to have one of the Vespid units be a five man unit, but um, you know, let, let's just bring a seeker and let's you know that that will give us a little bit more of that long range punching power that I wanted. Yes, it's only one missile, it's one off type of deal, but but I think we can make it work. And and a well placed seeker missile can really make a difference if. If, it, if you are in the right place at the right time. So, um, yeah, so I think that secret missile will be worth it. Um, then moving on to the patrol detachment, we have that same commander. I gave him an advanced targeting system here. As we discussed, I think we probably can have him be pretty safe um, the majority of the game uh, with good positioning. And so improving his offensive capabilities there are probably um, more valuable to us. He still has gunship diplomat. He still has two marker drones. Um, but then I have three units of crew instead of just two. Um, again, getting more of that screening ability for this commander, getting more bodies on, on the table. Um, this also compensates for having um, a few, one fewer unit of fire warriors. So, um, I mean, not totally, but uh, it, it does offer some, some additional low intensity firepower and bore control. So um, we're leaning heavy into the crew here, and I think it's wonderful. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like these changes? Overall, I think this revised list um, 
does have a little bit more durability, has a little bit more of a diversity of firepower in it, which is valuable. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a KG it's a KG list. We gotta we gotta you know uh, call our shots here, I guess. So uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's a really fun list. Uh, I I would be really I think this would be a lot of fun to play with, just with the number of auxiliary, auxiliaries. Uh, hopefully. With the new codex, auxiliaries get a little bit more attention, a little bit more of their time to shine, and we'll see more lists like this even in a competitive environment. So, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, happy wargaming. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This channel is made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining our community over there as well. Uh, really, the support means uh, more than I could say, so really, thank you. Uh, special thanks to Marcy, Andrew Lotz, A Little Pink Monster, Benaby Jones, Durza, Ever Keller, Robbie Goodwin, Jose Gomez, Ruger, Drew Pratley, Michael Byrne, Zealous Brimstone, Scott Heater, Stephen Cowan, Jared Egler, Chris Kessler, Tao Oswell, and Shifty.